Good evening, friends. I'm John Sal. I'm the Director of Music Ministries here at Abington Presbyterian Church and the Artistic Director for Music at Abington. These recent months have been a fairly significant impact in every aspect of our lives, and not least among those has been the ways that we've been able to gather uh, in person or have been prohibited from gathering in person, and especially all of the ways that we've gathered to make music. We are so glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, it's been very uh, challenging and also really special to have these dozen players behind me from the Abington Symphony Orchestra begin a process uh, with a number of restrictions in place to start to make some music together again. You'll see that everybody here is spread a little further apart than normal and they're all masked. It's how we've been rehearsing just these past four weeks. We put together a short program tonight mostly because we wanted a chance to be together again. We're concerned about all kinds of uh, impacts and losses for our professional artist communities at this time, but we're also really aware of uh, the need for folks who play as part of their avocational love of music and part of a community to want to be together at this time. So the program is, I hope, uh, in, uh, in front of you if you are interested, either in uh, materials that are part of the online links where you're finding us, or you can even get to uh, a, a pre-printed version of that as a download if you'd like to follow. There's a series of Baroque pieces from different styles and eras, and we're going to start with what's really an arrangement of a little aria from La Serva Padrona uh, by Paragolesi. It's a beautiful little way for us to sort of get our ears lined up together and to invite you into this space with some beauty and some music. The last thing I would like to do before we play that music is just offer a few words uh, by way of an invocation from the Psalms. We have been unable to add our instruments and voices in the ways we've been used to in these recent months uh, to the music of creation. We're so glad to be able to do so in this way again tonight. But this is a reminder that all manner of uh, sound and music can give glory to the beauty of creation and in so doing give glory to God. From Psalm 150, praise God in the sanctuary, praise God in the mighty firmament, Praise God for mighty deeds. Praise God according to God's surpassing greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with clanging cymbals, with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We hope that these notes will be a balm for you at the end of an anxious week as we've watched and waited through much of our uh, civic process. We're also just so glad to be together in this format. We hope you'll use uh, comment or chat features to greet one another as listeners and performers who are here. Welcome.
Thank you to all of you. Uh, we're glad to have just a few friends who are in the building with us that give us a little clearer sense of being with you as musicians and listeners together. And we're uh, happy for your applause as it also encourages us on through the program. Uh, the next part of the program is a long series of short pieces. So if you're looking at that and you see there are, uh, I think we're playing six of the nine movements that are there. They're all fairly short. They're uh, quite traditional in their format, but just absolutely beautiful in the great range of styles. This was originally incidental music to a play. Uh, the play was originally from 17, I'm sorry, 1670, I think about six or nine or something. Uh, and then this was for a remounting of that play in 1695. Purcell wrote this music with an overture. That's what you'll hear first to sort of set the scene and then pieces that would have accompanied some bits of action or been between scenes. Sort of the effective version of underscoring or movie scoring for the day when everything, of course, was live in that format. And uh, the story of Abdelazar or the Moor's Revenge is actually quite an interesting story from the period, especially this recasting of the play that happened in 1695. I would encourage you, either while you listen or at some point, uh, even to just do a Wikipedia search of that background. Uh, it plays on a number of the series uh, of expected and unexpected roles that were a part of uh, the relationship between religious and racial identity in Spain in the 15th and 16th century. Uh, and the play actually turns several of those expected roles sort of on their head so that the observers and listeners might be surprised in the way that uh, those who were uh, planned or expected in the play to be heroes and those who may have been expected to be villains each get their turn uh, to be fully human with some shortcomings and some uh, moments of triumph as well. So we give you each of these movements. Uh, we'll play them with just a brief pause between each, but as a whole group, all of the incidental music from Abdelazar Suite by Henry Purcell.
one of the great gifts of uh, this particular program and its setup. Um, you may come right through. I know you need to reset a little for us here. Uh, is the fact that uh, along with lots of other things that are sort of um, w bit by bit we're catching up on uh, soon, haircuts, teeth appointments, <laughs> all of those kinds of things, uh, that bit by bit we're uh, sort of getting back into find a way to do safely. This is one of those things we're trying to find a way right now to do safely and well. Uh, and while we've been doing that this fall, all of these folks who are, are here uh, because they love to make music and a part of this uh, volunteer community ensemble give of themselves because it's important and feeds their soul, but also they want to share that with you. Um, I'm particularly grateful for two of uh, two of our stars and colleagues right here in the orchestra, Joan Paltenstein and Bill Phillips, for uh, offering and agreeing as we looked for a little variety in the type of sound and the type of pieces on the program to play this next piece. It's a sonata for two violins and piano, they always want me to remember to say. Uh, a sonata for two violins and piano by Tartini. Giuseppe Tartini, a uh, uh, Baroque sort of string uh, master and writer in the way that lots of these other uh, familiar composers are. And so it's in a key that's brilliant for the violins. You'll hear long, beautiful phrases. The two violins are in dialogue part of the time. And, uh, and the piano gets to be here and support. And so it's been a lot of fun for me to also get to come out from behind the podium, I guess, uh, and get to join them on the stage at the piano. Here's the Tartini Sonata for two violins and piano.
I'll be very short uh, as we get ready to conclude with our final two movements uh, from the Holst St. Paul suite. Uh, and just say one, how glad we are that you've joined us uh, and how glad we are to be making music together again. We have a whole season uh, planned with an enormous degree of flexibility built in depending upon what will be possible as this year goes forward. Right now we are planning and hoping that we'll be able to have some in-person audiences once we've, uh, over the course of coming weeks, opened up a bit more for worship and other live events in this space and learned how to uh, do that safely. Uh, at this moment, it's not entirely clear whether we'll be able to do that in the next uh, certainly few weeks or months, depending upon how uh, general Department of Health and Safety guidelines go and how this uh, pandemic team here will respond to that uh, as well. But we hope that you'll continue to join us all season long online. We have professional guest artists as we have every year who are scheduled to be here to be with us and help to mark uh, the season with all of their gifts musically and we know you'll be glad to be part of that. And again, if we can gather in some numbers in person, uh, I know some of you would like to do that as well and we'll be glad to do that if we're able. The last thing I would say is Music at Abington lives on the generosity of its patrons and donors. We're so thankful for those who have already made contributions this season uh, those aren't printed in a way in a program or listed yet, but uh, we're just gathering that information and we'll be sure that we have a way to thank you more formally and to put that on upcoming events in programs or on our website uh, for these events as well. And finally, if you would like to support this series and ongoing events, of course, uh, we would be grateful for your chance to do so. You'll find in the notes about both of these videos uh, on Facebook or YouTube, there's a link to the donate uh, line that's on the web page. There's a specific music at Abington place where you can make those donations and we're grateful for whatever you can do. Most important to us is just that we can share this music with you and that you can be together with us in this way. So thanks for taking a moment out of this week to just breathe, to revel in the beauty of this music and to be even online in the presence of these players and of one another. I'm so thankful again to each of them. It's been a great uh, four weeks having a chance to rehearse and put this music together and to share it with you. We close with two movements from a piece that was originally written for the St. Paul School, St. Paul Girls School by uh, Gustav Holst. Those two movements were actually playing not in the order they appear in, but first uh, the intermezzo and we'll close with what is the opening of the piece, a very familiar and lively tune called the Jig. Thanks for being with us tonight. We're so glad to have you here and we look forward to more music together.
Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.